Hi, this is the first tutorial for Infinigrass. Let's start with the basics. Okay, first we will create a manager. So we create an empty game object and add the Infinigrass manager script. Now this is our manager and we can start painting grass directly. Uh, on unit terrain the grass can be painted without any other setup. So we can start from that. We have a unit terrain here. We go to the manager, select paint grass, we regulate the scale of the presets. So it's 20, we put 10 for example. And now we can start painting. When we erase grass, we can press the left shift button and click on the colliders of the grass to erase one by one. If we want to erase everything, we can put mass erase, define a radius here and press shift again and we can erase a whole region of grass so let's start here this is the grass and we're going to fine tune with arrays with mass arrays lower the radius and erase less grass for example while painting the unity editor can have an overhead which is not in uh, play mode so we may need grass to disappear when it's uh, far away and we can do that by using the editor view distance parameter so when we go far away the grass will disappear and make uh, the whole system much faster for the grass painting here for example Okay, now to paint on a mesh, which is not unity terrain, we need a special setup. So we need first to define a special tag, which is ppaint tag, so here, and apply to the mesh. Also we need a collider on the mesh. And now we will enable mesh painting, which is this option, paint on ppaint tag object. And we can start painting on meshes. These meshes already have the tag, so we can start painting directly like this. The grass uh, will normally follow the normal of the surface, but there are special brushes that have a custom rotation mode defined in the uh, uh, grower script, which we will talk about later, like the vines, for example which will only paint downwards, for example, for this brush. So let's put the scale a bit more here. This is the scale of the, of the brush. So the bigger, the bigger will be when we paint here. And you can see the vines, example. We can also refresh the grass here, so we see everything. Because the, the batching that happens at the editor may make a few blades disappear. So we refresh the grass to put it to a stable, full shown version. We can also ungrow the grass, so the grass may disappear from the scene completely. And uh, we can save the scene this way and uh, have zero grass amount when the game starts. Or, uh, for the also for the skin size and can regrow it for further editing for example okay, let's play some vertex grass now there are two kinds of grass it's vertex grass that does not use transparency and generally faster and there's transparent grass that use quads with transparency uh, 
a hint here is that the transparent objects must not overlap a lot to reduce the overdraw, the possible overdraw. So let's see some more options when we paint. Besides the size of the brush, which is this, we can also put a randomized rotation, so there will be randomness while painting in the grass rotation. Let's put a longer brush here. So we can also define density. If the density is larger, the, the grass will be more dense. Uh, note here that the transparent grass should have as much density as needed only and not more. And we can then with this uh, density spread the grass to a wider to a wider area, for example. So this way we can spread with less brushes, we can spread it more grass and more dense grass, for example, if we put three here. And this will be, each of these will be batched in one uh, batch group. So it's more efficient. But also it's, uh, when we use this in real time, uh, it's uh, harder to open the group, so it takes a bit more CPU time. So it's a trade-off here, which must be considered. Okay, let's enter play mode. We can ungrow the grass and enter the play mode. We can see our player here. The sphere is the player. And as the player moves away, the grass begins to disappear because of our LOD distances while painting the grass. So these LOD distances, level of detail distances, can be set here. Uh, are these are the distances here. So the cutoff distance is where the grass will disappear if we have all load stages. If uh, only one load stage exists, then the grass will disappear at load stage 1. If two stages exist, it will disappear at load stage 2. And if all exists, it will disappear at the cutoff distance. Also, these distances must be, one must be bigger than the other, this way, for example. There is also a shader-based grass disappearance, which uh, is governed by the grass fade distance. So we can select the brass, for example, paint this. And have the brass here, grass fade distance make it disappear gradually. Usually the fade distance must be a bit uh, before the LOD distance, the cutoff distance. So the grass uh, disappears smoothly and then disappears because of the level of detail completely from the scene. Also make note that we can add a wind zone and apply wind parameters like this. Have it also preview in editor. Turbulence and wind strength. And uh, the latest shader that has local interactivity uh, also needs to be adjusted for the stop motion distance, which is the interaction distance. So we're going to play mode. Let's see a bit how this behaves. When the player goes close to the grass, we can see now that the grass is affected, the more the this distance is. So if we need the grass to not be affected or has a strain, uh, if we use a smaller scale, this needs to be a lot smaller, for example, one or two or three, if the wall scale is around five. So 
it prohibits, it prohibits uh, some strange behavior of the grass, if it's a lot more. Generally, we need to keep it close to the hero based on the world scale. We can also tint the grass. So we can see here how the grass tints. With tint power, we can choose a color. And this is a pattern tint, so we can put a frequency. Lower frequency will spread the same color.